welcome to solve my math homework. So today we have a problem. We have a complex number written in rectangular form, 3 minus 5a. 3 is the real part, part negative 5 is the imaginary part. It's all raised to the fourth power. And the directions say, use De Morvis theorem to evaluate and then write in rectangular form. All right, well, the fact that it's in rectangular form and it says write in rectangular form should clue you in to the fact that we are first going to have to change forms and write it in polar form. And we're going to go through how to do that. Let's look at De Morvre's, De Morvre's theorem, and we'll talk about why. Well, now it becomes pretty obvious. So De Morvre's theorem says if you have a complex number z written in polar form, we have the magnitude r times the quantity cosine theta plus i sine theta, and you want to raise that complex number to a power n, then you simply take the magnitude, raise it to the nth power, and you multiply the angle that you're dealing with by n. All right, so we first have to get this thing into polar form. And that's not so bad. All right, let's, let's look at it from the very get-go. And if you already know how to do this, then this is going to be an easy review for you. Okay, so let's look at this on the complex plane. And yeah, let's do this. Okay, so here is our real uh, plane and here's our imaginary. All right, and we need the number three. So our A plus BI. Our a goes 3 in the real direction, the positive 3, and negative 5 in the imaginary direction, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, and so that is our complex number z. And it is written in rectangular form, right, because we have a horizontal distance and a vertical distance that gets us there. But there's another way to write this. We could write this. We could get you to this point z, giving you direction and distance. Okay, so what do we mean by that? Well, we could write this. The distance is a vector distance from the origin. Okay, so also written as magnitude of z. You notice it's in absolute value bars because think about this. This distance really is the absolute value of z. It's how far it is from zero. Okay, and so we call that r, and it's actually also called the modulus. That's one of the worst things about math. You have five different names for things sometimes, and uh, the definition doesn't change, so sometimes we give it different names. But it's the, uh, we'll call it the R value, okay? And when you think of circular distance, a lot of people call that radius. I, it'll probably happen in this video where I will call it radius. So think about this. We have this triangle, right? We have a right triangle. We have a distance here, A. We have a distance here, B. Right triangle, if you don't see it, there's your right angle. R is our hypotenuse. So I can find this distance with what I've been given because I know that r squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, right? Because I know the Pythagorean theorem since like the seventh grade. So then I know that this distance is going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared. Well, great, that's distance. I did mention that we need a distance and direction. So let's talk about direction. If I told you go r distance from the origin, there's so many ways, infinitely many ways you can do that. You're not going to get to the right point. I mean, you might guess, but I doubt it. Okay, so we need direction, theta. Direction is our angle. It's the angle created by this vector here, this little distance here, and the positive x-axis. Okay, so we can find that, all right? We know we have a right triangle. We know angles involve Sokotoa, right? sine, cosine, and tangent, that's not going to go away. So let's start looking at some of our relationships. Actually, let's talk about what theta is going to be, all right? So if we have so ka toa, yeah, I still write it down, and we have this angle, well, we know we have the opposite and we have the adjacent. So which one of those deals with opposite and adjacent? And that is tangent. So I know that the tangent of theta is going to be opposite, which is B, over adjacent, which is A. So the tangent of my angle is B over A. I can even take it one step further. I know that when I solve for angles, I use inverse tangent or arc tangent. So then I know that theta is going to be the, I'm going to write it as inverse or arc tangent B over A. Okay, great. Now, we want to manipulate A and B. We want to talk about what A and B mean in terms of cosine, sine, and tangent. All right, so let's look at this, and let's get one more color. Not to have a rainbow on here. But if you look at our angle, 
okay? Then let's do A first because A comes first here in our A plus BI form. Okay, so let's look at A, okay? A is adjacent and I know cosine, right? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So then I know that the cosine of A, nope, the cosine of theta, that didn't look right. Cosine of theta is A over R. Got a little ahead of myself. Okay, so the cosine of theta equals A over R, which if I, remember, I only care about A. I want to solve for A. So I'm going to multiply both sides by R, and that gives me what? A equals R times the cosine of theta. And you're probably thinking, I bet you can do the same thing for sine. And you can, as long as you don't mess up and say the sine of A or the sine of B. Okay, so if I'm looking at this angle, B is my opposite over hypotenuse. I know so is opposite over hypotenuse, right? So I know that the sine of theta is going to be equal to opposite B over R. Yes, I'm going to multiply both sides by R. And I'm going to say that B equals R times the sine of theta. Great. Now I can put this all together. I have to do some calculating still, but I really can. So I'm going to take my A plus BI form here, and I'm going to get rid of A, and I'm going to get rid of B, because in polar form we don't have A and B. So what's my A? R times cosine theta. So I'm going to write that. R times cosine theta plus, instead of B, what's B? R times sine of theta. Remember, this is our imaginary part, so we get the I. Don't lose that. All right, and you know, you've been in math how many years? You know we're not going to let you leave it like this. We're going to factor out the R, which gives us R times cosine theta plus, bring out the I out front because it looks better sine of theta. Okay, that's polar form. Now all we have to do is really just plug everything in. Okay, so we said that tangent, or we said that theta was the inverse tangent of b over a. Okay, so let's actually put some numbers into that. Let's get some values. All right, so that means that this is the inverse tangent of negative 5 over 3. Right? Okay, we're going to put that into a calculator because I don't know what that is. And you know, these numbers aren't very nice. A lot of times you see these uh, complex numbers and they're written with uh, rad 3 over 2 or 1 half or rad 3 is your A and your B value. And those are really nice radian numbers. This is not, okay? 3 and negative 5 are not nice radian numbers. So I'm going to do this in degrees, okay? So be sure you know what mode your calculator is in. And you get negative 59.038, so we'll say 04. We're going to go to the hundredths place. So that is what my theta is, okay? Now I need to solve for my R value, okay? Well, I told you way up here that R, can you see that? Okay, so it was the square root of A squared plus B squared, so 3 squared plus negative 5 squared, so that's going to be 9 plus 25, so rad 34 is our R value, okay? All right, so now we kind of have everything we need. We can plug this all in. All right, so R right here, square root of 34. Cosine of theta, okay? So cosine of negative 59.04 plus I times the sine of that same angle. And what did this problem want us to do from the get-go? It wanted us to take this whole thing and raise it to the fourth power. All right, so now, lo and behold, we can use that theorem that we were asked to use in the very beginning. We can simply raise our magnitude to that power and multiply both angles by that same number. Okay, so this is getting better. So we are going to have, let's kind of coordinate my work off and maybe move this over a little bit. Okay, so we're going to have Rad 34 raised to the fourth power. And then we're going to move it a little more because you still can't see it. And then we are going to have times, I'm going to use my brackets here, cosine of, what do we have? So remember, I have n is 4. So 4 times negative 59.04. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing to our sine value. So 
So plus i times the sine of 4 times negative 59.04. All right, great. We're getting a little smushed here, but the calculator is going to help everything be better now. So rad 34 raised to the fourth power, when you punch it in, you get 1156, okay, times the cosine. We're going to have a negative, right? Negative 59.04 times 4 is going to give us negative 236.16 plus i sine of the same dang thing, negative 236.16, okay? Well, all right, it said rectangular form, right? This is now polar form. Mm, albeit it's ugly. So when you want to get from here back to rectangular, all you have to do is evaluate your cosines and sines. This is actually the easy part. So you're going to evaluate the cosine at negative 236.16. You're going to evaluate the sine of negative 236.16. And you are going to distribute the, the 1156 to both those numbers. So as to not skip any steps, 1156, we're going to Plug this in, cosine of negative 236.16 gives me negative 0. Point, I feel like I should have done this before I turned the camera on. Plus, and we got the sine of negative 236.16 is going to give me 0. 0.8306i. Right? All right, let's see if I can move this, and I can. All right, now we're just simply going to distribute. Remember, we're trying to get back to rectangular form, so we can't leave these parentheses here. So 1156 times point, negative 0. 0.5568 is going to give me negative 643.66 plus 1156 times 0. 0.8306 is 960.17i. Okay? And so that is back in rectangular form. 3 minus 5a raised to the fourth power. I hope that helped. It was a really long problem. If you have questions, pop them into the comment section. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel because this is what we do. You send in problems and I solve them. Thanks for watching.